Hello, everyone. I'm Stephen Long, and this is The Writing Life. Um, you know, as somewhere along my writing journey, uh, someone said there are two kinds of writers, two kinds of authors, those who have published and those who wish to. And uh, that was certainly the case with me. Um, Self-publishing has become uh, more accepted. It used to be called Vanity Press, and now uh, some very successful authors are, are self-publishing. Uh, they like the control, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, you you have an opportunity to get work out there that may be overlooked otherwise. And so, before I uh, introduce my guests, I want to read two quick things. This was a fun little book. It's called Rotten Rejections. And there are stories about now famous authors who had a tough time at first. So this first uh, little bit is from George Bernard Shaw, which no doubt you've heard of. He says, I object to publishers. The one service they have done me is to teach me to do without them. They combine commercial, uh, commercial rascality with artistic touchiness and pettishness without being either good businessmen or fine judges of literature. So that was his thought. And then one more from uh, about E.E. E. Cummings, who, um, uh, when his work was finally published, uh, he, this was the dedication. No thanks to Farrar and Reinhardt, Simon and Schuster, uh, Coward McCann, Limited Edition, Hardcourt Brace, Random House, Equinox Press, Smith and Hawes, Viking Press, Knopf, uh, Dutton, Harper's, Scribner's, and so on. Uh, the book was finally published by his mother. So th this is sort of what we're, uh, writers are up against today. Very difficult sometimes. And uh, again, self-publishing offers uh, uh, an alternative to that. And with that, let me introduce my guest, uh, Gail Watson, who uh, can help you along your, your path to publishing. Uh, welcome, Gail. Thank you. Yeah. And just, well, actually, I was going to jump right in, but let, let's get just a little bit of your background. You were doing printing, not necessarily books. Is that correct? Right. I'm, I'm an artist, and I've always wanted to do something creative. Yeah. And so I worked for a newspaper group. I did display, typeset display advertising. Then I worked for a printer for two years as a pre-press artist and learned to do layout and things like that. Okay. And, uh, and then I, I moved to Newburgh, and I was working with a nonprofit doing their desktop publishing. And the, the woman who started that, uh, Women of Purpose International, asked me if I could help her put her book together. Well, I'd never done a book, sure. but I thought, well, you know, I'll give it a try. And it just opened up a whole new world. Yeah. Uh, and people have just heard about me, you know, over the years from other people and kind of word of mouth. And I've done a lot of books now. I think sometimes uh, we don't even know that opportunity is presenting itself. It's mm -hmm. just uh, you're in your daily routine and you're doing your job and uh, something comes up. And I think, uh, you know, a lot of work is problem solving and somebody presented you with a problem. And I know when I had my business, uh, we were so dumb, we didn't know we couldn't do it. So <laughs> we, you just launch into it. Yeah, that's kind of how I was. Show us your first example there. Okay. Um, this um, over through word of mouth, um, Patrick Corder heard about me, and mm -hmm. he he had written or he had wanted to do a book on his experiences in the Vietnam War, and this is basically what he gave me was uh, a lot of Xerox pages, and I took a look at it and I thought, oh, we can do something better than that. Okay. You know? And so. Um, so you weren't intimidated. No, it, it was a challenge. Yeah. You know, so um, this is the book that I ended up having, uh, pr basically putting together, and I print and bind the books myself too. And I was reading through it, and he talked about a Claymore mine. I didn't know what a Claymore mine was, and I thought, well, probably other people reading this wouldn't either. So I went online and found out what a Claymore mine was, and added that, and put a map in of the area that he was in. And so you were, in that case, sort of an editor as well. Yeah, I, I, I kind of like the, to add to what the, the client has. And so um, we spent about a year 
working on mm -hmm. the book and uh, it's now available online. Uh, he has passed away. Oh. He uh, uh, was exposed to Agent Orange and took his life basically, you know, and uh, he had some, a lot of health problems. But his book, his wife um, showed his book to the people who have the Vietnam, the Traveling Wall of Vietnam. And yes. this, this book is now in the Traveling Wall Great. of Vietnam. You know, if I could just comment on that, and this would be another, uh, an, an endorsement for people to uh, use your talents and, and bring forth their histories. And mm -hmm. so the, the quote that I'm thinking of is, if you want to be immortal, have a child, plant a tree, or write a book. Right. And so now he is. Yeah. That's great. He is. He was a wonderful man. I just really enjoyed working with him. Sure. Um, actually, before we started here, you were saying that one of the things you enjoy most is working with the people, yes. getting to know their stories and so on. Yeah. Anything come to mind specifically? Um, Any examples? Well, this this book, uh, A Legacy of Love, it was written uh, for her family to give away as Christmas gifts. Okay. And we spent about two years working on this book, gathering information from her siblings. And so she had each, there's a section in here for each of her siblings. And they all tell the same stories, but they tell them in a different way. That's they terrific. They remember them differently. Sure. Which makes it kind of interesting. Oh, that's great. And so that was a really fun book to work on. Now, before you go on, just mm -hmm. uh, this is a technical question. How do you do this? How do you do a hard, well, yeah, anything, but I'm thinking of a hard cover. Well, in this case, they actually sell them this way. They sell c these cases. Okay. And they have glue in the spine. And then I bought the heating element, and you just drop the pages in set it in the heating element, it melts the glue in the spine, and these covers um, come in different spine widths depending okay. on the size of your book. Okay. Which made it easy, because she yeah. especially wanted hard cover, and I normally do soft cover. Well, I, I see that. <clears throat> um, again, when I did my book, I wanted a, 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 an advanced reader's copy, and I didn't know about your service, or I would have used you. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, it was just fascinating to me. On a Sunday night, I emailed my manuscript to Powell's in, in Portland, and I think Tuesday in the mail I had a book. And it just, yeah. boy, have things changed. Yeah, and I, yeah. I have a lot of really good equipment um, in my basement and mm -hmm. the garage, and, and I do all the work out of my home. Is your printing now primarily books, or do you do a, a range of things? No, I, I still do a range of things. I mm -hmm. do business cards and brochures. I work on special projects with people. Okay. Um, I love working on, like, making a marketing tool that's, you know, a printed marketing tool that's really unique and different. Mm -hmm. Kind of working those things out with people. And it sounds like in that area you would uh, present some suggestions, some ideas, maybe, yeah. of things uh, that uh, they can do. That's the thing. I love working back and forth with people. You know, what do you think about this? Oh, yeah, you know, let's try that. And, mm -hmm. and or they bring their ideas to me, and they don't know how to make them work. And so, mm -hmm. you know, between the two of us, we work out all those details. And If somebody watching would want to use your service, mm -hmm. um, what's ideal? I, I <clears throat> we can see that you can work with a lot of things. But what's ideal for you? What would you like to have? Digitally? Or hard copies? You know, it honestly doesn't matter. <clears throat> uh, you know, I, I typeset. If they, if like this book here, she brought it to me all handwritten. Really? And I typed it. Uh, other people give it to me in Word documents. And I just format it, you know, set the pages up to look really nice. And mm -hmm. um, I've worked with Lisa Olin Harris on a oh, couple yeah. of her books. Yeah. Uh, we got to have Lisa she's, on the show. Yeah, she's, she's terrific. Yeah, she's great to work with. Yeah. And, you know, it, it really doesn't matter. I'm pretty flexible in that way. Okay. And I can see by the plaid here you did Ellie's book. Yes. I did Ellie's book, her second book. <clears throat> and that okay. was, she was really fun to work with. Sure. And I recognize Mark's book. Yeah. <laughs> The Theology of Wine. Yeah. Yeah, he heard about me. Uh, I'm on the Arts Alliance board, and his wife was too, and so she okay, knew about Robin. me, and uh -huh. that's how I, that connection happened. And then uh, Barbara Doyle is a friend of mine, and she wrote this book about the Central School in Newburgh that's now the Cultural Center. Oh. This is the history of that. 
Uh, I pretty much do all the printing of books for the Newell House Museum out at Shampooey. Uh, I don't know them. Okay, it's it's the you know where the government started in okay. Oregon, and uh, and the Newell House Museum is it's it's just a lot of history about back then, and because I'm on. The, oh, those I recognize. And I work with Paper Gardens and Terwa Creative Writing Festival. Sure. This is the Paper Gardens book, and so I, I do those too. You're a busy and, lady. Uh, yeah, I've worked with people doing poetry books, and um, I worked with uh, with Will, Will Robertson. Uh, I actually have who that. Who has Casey and Kyle, and mm -hmm. I printed some of his first books until he found another way to do it that was more efficient for him. So. Well, <clears throat> speaking of efficiency, I, I come from a manufacturing background, and that's why I, I, I like to learn about the mechanics of something. So um, when, I, when I was thinking about my book, I contacted uh, a, a printer and just asked the cost of, of doing a book and then you know some greater quantity. And it, it seems to me that the cost of one book was five thousand dollars and then the cost of two was five thousand and one dollar you know what I mean yeah so the, the the greater quantity do you have a limit uh, is there something that you just stay away from or do you care I mostly work with people who want anywhere between 10 and 50 books okay and at a time sure you know and then maybe later on they want 25 more mm -hmm. and that's really easy I just keep their file and and that's not a problem if they want to sell it online, I um, upload their books to CreateSpace.com, and well, talk a little bit about that. Is that is that print on demand? Is that what yeah, that's called? Yeah, print on demand, uh -huh. and uh, and and it's really easy. They do a really good job. So in that case, you don't do the printing. No, I okay. don't. But I do all the setup and all, okay. the, all the layout, and then I just upload the files for them. So you really offer a comprehensive service. I yeah. mean, you can do all or part or Yes. And, and, and give some direction there. Yeah, it depends on which way they want to go. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Originally, I, I really needed some help in that area because uh, I was using Word, and I, th I think that's not probably the best program. No, I, Pub use, publisher. I use InDesign. InDesign, yeah, okay. Yeah, Adobe InDesign. And uh, if somebody wanted to come to you, then uh, that I, would be... I can take their Word file okay. and just flow it into InDesign and yeah. do all the layout from that. Okay. Uh, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, my phone number. Okay, which is? 503-476-5624. <laughs> okay. I'm, I only see people by appointment, so I can give that person my full attention. Good. And okay. because I work out of my home. So. Yeah. Okay. And I'm in Newburgh. Yeah. But I work countywide. Well, and I was going to ask you, uh, do you promote this uh, in some other way, or is it just word of mouth? People tell um, other people? and. Just word of mouth, yeah. Um, yeah. And being, I'm real involved uh, in the community and in you know Arts Alliance, and I'm involved with the chamber and mm -hmm. and been on committees and things. And I, people just kind of get to know me that way. A little inside story: we're in a studio, but you used to be a camera person here. I did. Yeah. I worked on the Arts Alive show. Yeah. So you kind of know both sides of it. Yeah. Well, good. Gail, we're about out of time. Uh, we'll we'll wrap up. Uh, anything that I haven't asked you that you, you'd like people to know? Um, well, I will say that the setup on some of these smaller books was like $250 okay. just to get it all set up and ready to go. Mm -hmm. And up to maybe, you know, 1500 when I worked over a two-year period. Okay. The total cost might have been 1500 So that's kind of the range. I'd say anywhere from, you know, 250 to 1500 depending on how much time it takes to put it together, how much work we do on it. Right. And then the, the books run around between 4 and $6 a piece, depending on the size okay. uh, to purchase. Helps people budget a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Well, great. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> we'll talk again. Folks, thanks uh, for watching. This is The Writing Life. I'm Steve Long. Uh, if you would like to contact me with a suggestion for a guest or a topic, uh, or just to say hi, you uh, can get me through my website, which is stephenwlong.com. Uh, and the Facebook page is either The Writing Life, which this show has, 
or my book is There's a Somebody on Facebook, and you can contact me that way too. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you again. Bye-bye.